Good morning. You're watching Much Ado About Something and I'm Donna. Well, I'm out here in the backyard today. I've got my grandchildren with me, so you're going to hear some noise, some background noise, but I'm going to try to focus and make you make it where you can hear what I'm, I'm sharing with you today. What I wanted to share with you today is five tips how to, to grow a garden on a budget with little to no cost. It's not as hard as you think to get started. Have you ever watched a gardening show or been interested and wanted to get in, into gardening or herbs and then you were so pulverized with information because the person wanted to tell you everything they knew about it that they had learned in their life and, and they wanted to tell you the best of everything and, and you were just so overwhelmed with the information being bombarded at you that it just defeated you and you didn't even want to get started? Well, today we're going to uh, offer solutions for that. You can start and garden simply and easily and inexpensively with little to no cost. And I want to share with you some ways to do that today. And it'll bring you just as much joy and just as much um, produce, you know, in a lot of ways as many of these other people that are sharing and bombarding you with information. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Donna, and you're watching Much Ado About Something. Now, the first thing you'll need when you're deciding to garden is a place to, to put your plants, to put your soil and to put your plants. I have here, this came from a thrift store. It's a container. This is an old coffee can, an old bucket. This is a bucket from the Dollar Tree. And here's an old paint can. Any of these will work to plant plants in. What we'll need for these are some holes in the bottom of these containers and some soil. And over here I have a, a tote. If you want a bigger garden, this tote makes an excellent place to plant in. I won't have to punch holes in this because this is this has a crack in the bottom that will let water out. It's a recycled tote, so I'm, I'm repurposing this today. You can use cans of any size that you save to plant in. You can punch holes in those. Those are easy to punch holes in. Over here, I've used a rotisserie uh, chicken uh, bottom of the tray, and that's what I've got this orega oregano growing in. Mint. I've got mint growing in these styrofo styrofoam cups. So your plants can be, I mean, your containers can be as expensive or as cheap as you want them to be. They don't have to be anything special and they'll hold the soil and grow beautiful plants just as easy as if you'd put a lot of money into those. Now the next thing you're gonna need is some kind of soil. This is potting soil. I think this was about $13 a bag, which can be expensive if you're starting a garden in containers or even in a little patch in your yard. If you've cleared a little area in your yard and, and just put some stones or whatever around it. Potting soil is uh, relatively expensive if you're trying to do, do it on a no cost to low cost budget. Now an, art, an alternative to potting soil is gardening soil. Now garden soil, you see it says here for in-ground use. It's not as um, ideal for containers as it would be if you put this in a little plot on the ground. But sometimes this is typically uh, a few dollars cheaper than potting soil. The potting soil I got, I think, was $13, and I got this for $8.99. So you can get this typically cheaper. And that is an alternative. But you can start a garden without having to buy any soil. You can get soil from across the street or a, a friend's house that you might know that has you know, property, and, and they wouldn't mind if you went and dug up some soil. I have done that before. I used to pay the kids to go right here across the street in the woods where they played anyway when they were about 10 or 11, and I would give them five-gallon buckets and little shovels, and they would go over there and uh, 
and get dark, uh, soil for me, they would bring it back here and I would add it to my gardens because I couldn't even afford a bag of soil. I had the house to pay for, you know, living expenses, food, education, medicine. There was many things that I had to pay for and, and gardening was not in my budget. So I had to find low cost or no cost ways to do that. And I was willing to do that because, you know, I wanted to garden. So I would, um, you know, find soil wherever I could. I would ask somebody if I knew they had property, if they would mind if I would go into their woods or go uh, maybe in their field or, or somewhere that they were not using, if they would mind if, if you went and got some soil. So you can find soil in free ways. Check with your uh, county. They have free giveaways for people that live in the, in the area. Sometimes they uh, give away free mulch of wood chips and soil. Sometimes if there's uh, working on roads or anything in your area, you can allow them to come and dump that soil onto your property for free. So there's free alternatives. You just have to look around a little bit for them for in your area. Research how to find free soil if uh, the bag soil is too much. Okay, Samuel is going to help today. He is going to shovel this soil that we got, our compost and our uh, soil mix, into our tub. We're doing great, Father. And we're going to use this tub to plant something in. This is going to be our inexpensive, no-cost garden here because that tub is recycled. I had used it for years and years, but it got a crack in the bottom. And so I couldn't use it for really storage anymore, but I decided to go ahead and make a garden out of it. And since I already had this, then it's no cost. And Samuel's going to put the soil that we've made from compost and uh, dirt that we've had, and he's going to add it to this. So this is not going to cost us anything to make this garden space. Now while Samuel's out there filling up that uh, tote to make a garden out of, I'm going to go ahead and use the soil that I have up here and I'm going to fill up these two containers. This Goodwill or thrift store container and this saved container. That's just some soil that I had that I'm recycling. Now you don't have to worry about tools either. You don't have to put a lot of money into your tools. If you don't have a lot of money to spend, the Dollar Tree and the uh, Family Dollar, Dollar General, Lowe's, Home Depot, Tractor Supply, all those places carry tools so you can uh, judge which one meets your budget and buy them. If $1.25 is what you can get, then $1.25 gets you something like this. And you know that works perfectly good. And you can use tools that are around your house. I watched one show and the woman wanted to buy the tools because they were pretty. So if that matters to you, you can uh, use contact paper or paint, paint on them yourself and decorate them the way that you want them to look. To me, I don't care so much that they're pretty as long as they're, uh, do what they need to do as long as they're practical and useful. But pretty gives always an advantage. Yes, David's getting his shovel. Sorry, folks. I'm having. To, I've got grandkids here today. And Ollie. Good morning, Ollie. Well, we're. Uh, doing no cost or low cost gardening today we found our containers or we've cleared out a little area 
somewhere near our house that we have to plant things. Whatever suits your needs. If you're in a rental, containers are excellent. If you just have a, like if you're in an apartment or a condominium, a small space, and you can only grow what you grow in containers, that's the excellent way to start. We filled them with dirt. It can be the dirt that you can afford, whether that's potting soil, gardening soil, or, get, or uh, foraging for free dirt from friends and family, from uh, even your community that's given away resources. You can, uh, you can use any of the above, and that will help you uh, with your containers, with your soil. And the next thing is, what are we gonna put inside of our containers. Well, there are several ways to get economical plants started in your garden. Of course, one of the best ways is if you have a friend that's dividing their gardening uh, flowers right now. Right now is a good time to uh, put out there on uh, social media or uh, amongst your friends, maybe even a little note on your church bulletin board. Whatever you need to do, now is a good time. Thank you, Samuel. Is a good time to look for uh, people that are dividing their gardening plants up and, to, and probably, possibly get those free or at a very low cost. I've shared with you in my past videos how Donald and I went to sales at people's houses, much like yard or uh, garage sales. And we would pay just a couple of dollars for plants where people had dug them up out of their garden and they were they had a too many of them in abundance and so they were just selling a few so we've picked up many plants for a dollar or two at those kind of sales if they have those in your area that's a good thing to stop and look for and friends you know as they're uh, managing their own garden if something grew prolifically and they need to divide that now's a good time to get maybe a cutting or uh, some tubers or a couple of um, rootings you know uh, from friends and families plants that they're willing to uh, to let you do that. Don't ever take anything without asking. Just don't. Just don't ever pluck or cut off anybody's plant or dig up anything without asking them first and getting their permission and their blessing on that plant. And another very economical, you've heard me say this before, another very economical way is seeds. Now you, there's quite a bit of seeds in this and there's quite a bit of information on the back of a seed pack. Now what is a seed pack going to tell you? It's going to tell you all the things you need to know about what those seeds that you're planting. For example, if you were to plant these nasturtiums, so you, you went and you bought these for $2.79. Sometimes after spring, after the uh, initial first planting season, you can find seeds that are on sale. They're 25% off at Tractor Supply right now. So if you buy seeds, you can see the price is of $2.79 for these nasturtium seeds. There's quite a few in here. Maybe a fourth of this pack of seeds, and that's a lot of plants. If you plant these and all of these come up, you're going to have a lot of nasturtium plants for $2.79. And then on the back of this uh, seed packet there's going to be information valuable information that comes on your your plants and it's going to tell you if it's an annual or or a, or a perennial or perennial right here it tells you these are annuals so you would have to plant these every year but this seed packet is going to tell you an abundance of information it tells you something about the seeds about that uh, flower when it grows. It's fragrant. It's a single flowering climber with abundant and colorful blooms. It's attractive to hummingbirds. It says, note, to add germination, rub seed with a nail file. Sow an average soil in full sun to part shade after danger of frost. Sow about 12 inches apart and cover with a half inch of fine soil. Firm, lightly, and keep evenly moist. And seeds, seedlings emerge in 10 to 14 days. For more blooms, do not over fertilize. So this would be an economical plant in itself in that you wouldn't need to fertilize this plant a lot. It tells you when it blooms. It blooms in springs and in summer. And it shows you how to outdoor sow this. And you can find your area on this 
map and you'll know when's a good time to plant this. But even if you're past that time, you can still plant it and it'll grow. It'll tell you the sun that this plant needs, how many days it's gonna take it to bloom, the height. If you're planting a garden, the height of things matter. You wanna put your tall things in the back. The depth that you plant the seed, how many uh, inches you, you go in between each seed. And it tells you that it's container friendly. So there's a lot of information on a seed packet. So valuable for $2.79. What an economical way to have plants in your garden. If you can't get them free, this is the second best way. And sometimes people will even share their seeds with you if they have an abundance of seeds that they've saved or they didn't get to plant everything they wanted to plant. There are people that have seeds that will be glad to share them with you. So seeds is a great way to fill your container garden or your little starting garden with no cost or very little cost. Sometimes if you can't afford seeds or you, you don't have anybody that, uh, that you know that can share seeds with you, you can buy small plants for just a couple of dollars at either Lowe's, Home Depot, Tractor Supply, grocery stores. There's many places you can find seedling packs, the multiple packs of six, four, or eight those are usually more uh, less expensive than the single uh, potted plants that you would buy. But you can find those, and those will give you quite a bit of plants for the money. They're, though probably the most expensive way that you can uh, start a garden is to buy single potted plants to put out in your garden. But that goes along with your budget. If you can afford plants, say you're really wanting to try mint, and mint's already growing in this little pot at the store, you can certainly pick that up, which probably runs around five or six dollars right now for just a small plant. You can buy those and those will give you instant gratification. You can put those in your container or in your small garden area and you'll, you'll have instant results. There'll be something green and growing there. So that's also an alternative to low cost gardening. Now the next thing is fertilizing. Well, we saw in the back of these seeds that there are plants that you can get that need little to no fertilizer. Those are the kind of plants that you want. You wanna buy those if you're not going to have very much to invest in your garden. You wanna find something that's prolific and needs little to no fertilizer. So that, that would be fine in that area, is to, is to look at those seeds and look at the plants and uh, pick those plants, choose those plants. Of course, if someone's given you plants, you don't have a lot of, um, you know, a choice. You know, you take what they give you and you're thankful for that. And some of the most beautiful gardens. Uh, I look back on the times when I didn't have money to go into plants and neighbors and friends shared their plants with me. And those plants to this day are still some of my favorite plants because they bring back memories of those people. Yes, David. There's a chicken that laid some eggs. Yes. Did you help Samuel get the eggs today? No. Okay. But some of those, good job, Samuel. Some of those plants. Well, I helped you. Okay. Let's go get them. They're all, Samuel's already gotten them for today. We'll get, we'll check again later to see if the eggs, uh, chickens laid more. So sorry uh, for the interruption. But some of my favorite flowers are flowers that people have gotten, um, that I have gotten from friends and family. I've shared with you in previous videos the um, tiger lilies that Donald's grandma gave us and she called them mole plants. And then there's other, uh, you know, the, the plants that I bought that were, um, the lilies that I bought that were $2 in that little pot and they multiplied and multiplied and I was able to give plenty of them to friends and family. You know, uh, those plants I love. I don't know that I would have bought them from a nursery. I don't know that I would have chosen them, but just by getting them the way that I did from friends and inexpensively at sales, I added them to my garden and they have turned out to be some of my most favorite plants. And so that's a good 
you know, don't feel like you're getting shortchanged because you didn't get to hand pick everything that went in there that maybe you now, can uh, we do bought it? plants per chance. No, no, can you get the egg? Okay, sorry. David is really wanting to get eggs this morning. See, there's no eggs. Samuel's already got the eggs today. A chicken! Oh, well, he's, she's probably laying an egg. Let's leave her alone. Maybe you can come and get her egg in a few minutes, okay? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, he loves to, to gather the eggs. And he loves to eat them and he cooks them. So we are um, talking about getting the free plants uh, to go into your your garden and, and once you get those free plants, the fertilizing of them. So the first step in uh, keeping your cost down in fertilizing is to, is to get plants that need a little fertilize. And remember, you can uh, compost your kitchen scraps. You can compost your uh, yard waste. If you have a yard, you can compost your grass and your kitchen scraps, your cardboard and no, uh, you know, non-toxic ink paper paper that has non-toxic ink you can compost all of that and that can give you some free fertilizer compost in itself will feed and, and fertilize your plants that takes a little time to break down and compost so my best advice is to go ahead and get something that doesn't need a lot of fertilizer to begin with and then of course the second thing is to get is just to make your own by composting your kitchen scraps and whatever you have to break down and make compost. And the fifth thing is watering. You have to water your plants. Now we live in the city and in the city, our water has a lot of chemicals. Our water has chlorine and fluoride and it's chemically treated. It goes to a processing plant. And so watering can be an expensive thing for us. To help in the no cost, low cost uh, step about watering. Number five, water, keeping your plants watered. And if, and if you're in a hot area where things dry out fast, you know, it is so important that you keep everything watered. You can run water and let it sit out and a lot of your uh, chlorine and stuff will evaporate out of it. You can catch rainwater if that's legal in your state. You know that's not legal in every state, but if you're able to do that, you can catch rainwater and you can use that to, to uh, water your containers. And I'll tell you something that you don't hear a lot, but if you take baths, if you take a bath, or even if you take a shower, you can plug up the bottom of your tub and save that water that you've took a bath in and you can water your plants with that. That's an excellent way of recycling water and, and, and still watering your plants. It won't hurt your plants at all. And it is a little more work because then you have to carry that water. There's mushrooms on the wood. Oh, don't touch them. We don't touch them, okay? We don't. We don't ever touch mushrooms that we don't know anything about. Don't eat them, no. They could be poisonous, yes. So we, uh, you know, if you're a dedicated uh, person that wants to save as much water as you can, wants to save as much money as you can, in just a minute, please. I'm going to finish this video and then I'll cook eggs with you. And so what we're going to do is... Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to wrap this up or I'm not going to have a minute to share anything with you. But you can reuse water. There's, there's easy and uh, inexpensive ways to water your plants. And it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. Make the most efficient use of the water that you can. A mulch, um, cardboard or um, wood chips, uh, any kind of pine needles. Anything that you can use for mulch really helps uh, retain your water in your garden or on your, in your little garden or your plants. Well, that's the five tips I have for you. Thank you for uh, joining me today. Sorry for the interruptions. 
I'm going to go and make David some eggs. And like always, until next time. Now? Yes, now it's time. It's time to make the eggs. Yes. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Okay. Two for me and, and one for Ellie. Okay, and let's see if anybody else wants eggs, okay? Okay. Every